turn this down. <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> down, 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 down. Please, more down. That's all the way. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. We need that to all one. That's my mic. Sorry, can't hear you. Uh, I can hear you. I'm going to try to say I've got a big mouth, people. When all I can hear is big, there's something wrong. All right. Okay, so we're going to give Chris Bennett back here. He's got to make some changes. This morning, we're going to do something a little different for an Easter program. We're going to kill the light and the light be back here. We're going to do something a little different. Very often, at Easter time, there is usually a play or a cantata or something. You are still going to get the account of the crucifixion of the burial and the victorious resurrection. It is going to be in song and scripture interspersed. And we pray that it's a blessing. It's a unique piece. We just pray that it's a blessing. And this first song, Miss Sally and I are going to sing. There's a comparison that a lot of people don't catch when they hear the song. We remember the story of rich man and Lazarus. The rich man died and went to hell. Lazarus died and went to heaven. But his body, they left him. He was worthless. And they left him to die like a tramp on the street with no respect. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, left his home and was brutally crucified and was killed as a criminal. So basically treated the same way as Lazarus with no respect. So keep that comparison in mind as we go through Tramp on the Street. Only a He who laid down at the rich man's gate, he begged for crowns from the rich man to eat. He was only a tramp out.
that he so cried out, he gave up the ghost. He said, truly, this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Lips, and of Joseph and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him. Many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. Now when the evening was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and prayed for the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled that he were already dead. And calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. When he knew it, of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher, which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone into the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. Thank you. 
we're going to tell you what we believe. We believe in the resurrection. We believe he's coming back. You've heard this song multiple times because of the series, and it just seems to fit right into this. We believe. In his time of desperation, all we know is doubt and a tear. There is only one foundation. Oh, we believe.
so much in my life and so much pain, multiple marriages, and the one that sent me over the brink was a man who committed suicide. It broke my heart. It broke me for a year. I drowned myself in a bottle. And then God sent an angel. I know you guys can't, I can't see you, but how many of you believe in angels? How many of you believe that God still sends angels? God sends people in your life to bring you back to him or to bring you to a, a place where you desperately need him. See, I had a void, I had an emptiness inside. And there wasn't a drug and there wasn't a drink that could fill that void because at the end of the day, it was still there. But Jesus filled that void. I remember coming to a service. It was March 20th, 2011. Roland had invited me to church. And I'd already set myself up. I wasn't going to fit in. They were going to see my sin. It was like I felt like I had this big X across my chest that said sinful. Full of sin. Loser. You're never going to amount to anything. And I believe those lies. I walked in that place and I could feel God's presence. I felt it in those handshakes of the women that would greet you at the door. I just felt it in my surroundings of all the people that came and greeted me. Then I went to Sunday school. After Sunday school, I went to worship service. Not too different from any service. Not too different from this service here in Danville. It started with worship, with music that pierced my heart. And then the preacher spoke. And it was one of those messages that was meant just for me. 
If I hadn't known better, I thought that Brother was calling and said, Pastor, I'm bringing this woman up and A, B, C, D. You just need to talk about all of it because she really needs God. Well, that's not what happened at all. I had a divine appointment that day. God knew I was going to be there in that chair. God knew I was going to be at that worship service. And at the end of that service, he spoke to me. And he said, I know you hurt. I've watched you all your life. And I've always been there. People will fail you, but I never will. I love you. And that was it. He spoke to me. Just as clear as I'm speaking to you, I heard him. And I made my way to that altar, and I surrendered my life to Jesus. And my life has never been the same since. I never thought I'd have the courage to stand before a congregation of shelters. With all the ministry that Roland and I have done in 10 years, I never thought that I that God could use me. And I want you to know there's not a person in here that God can't use. You see, you're not here by mistake. You were at the First Baptist Church in Danville today on purpose. You have an appointment with God. Some of you might have some unsettled business. Some of you may not know about Jesus. Some of you may not know what love is. Some of you may still be dealing with addictions, with hang-ups, with broken relationships. Some of you are dealing with your own sin. Some of you are dealing with pains and hurts that, have, that you caused yourself and that others have caused you. He's right next to you. He said, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. This is Psalm 139. I knew everything about you before you were born. I know every single thing that you've ever done and that you ever will do. And my death covers that. My blood covers those sins from yesterday and those sins you're going to make tomorrow. I covered it. So I want you to think about something. Because Jesus is about love. That's what I think of is love. Eventually, these animal sacrifices aren't going to be enough. And I love them. I created them to love them, and I want them to love me. So, son, I'm going to send you 
And you're going to teach them who I am. You're going to show my people what I can do. You're going to be me in the flesh. But son, not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to accept you. Not everybody's going to understand who you are. And they're going to hurt you. Son, they're going to hurt you so bad that they're going to beat you almost to death. And you're going to bleed. And then, son, they're going to take you. And you're going to, you're going to suffer the most humiliating death there is. They're going to nail your body to the cross. And they're going to kill you. But, son, you're going to overcome death. Because I'm going to bring you home. Because you have to spill your blood so my people can come to me. You're going to be that bridge that brings people to me. Can you imagine that? Can you even imagine 